Hello, Mountaineer Nation. Welcome in to another edition of West Virginia Live right here on the Voice of College Football. Um, so we're going to do a small transition here at the Voice of College Football. As everybody knows, Golden Blue Dude um, always did this show, 8 o'clock on Friday nights. And I, I took it over to help out for a while. But the whole time I've been looking for somebody um, to take to take my place and to do this show on a regular basis. Um, every Friday night for you, but that date's going to check. Day's going to change, but I'll let him explain that to you because um, we found somebody, and and these guys are awesome. They have they have a YouTube channel for West Virginia University um, ca uh, called the Ryan and Rush Show. If you're not subscribed there, be sure and hit head over there and subscribe it up. But we have Mr. Ryan McIntyre with us tonight. Hey, Ryan, how you doing, man? I'm doing good, Joey. Honored uh, to be talking to Mountaineer Nation once again. And yes, uh, we do host the Ryan and Rush show. Rush is actually out. He had a uh, commitment that uh, for charity for the Ryan and Rush. So I am filling in and we look forward to bringing content every single week over here on this channel. And honestly, we're, we're paying tribute to the Golden Blue dude. I was a big fan of his um, it, throughout the years and we're honored to have the opportunity to Follow in his footsteps, and we'll never be able to replace a guy like that. I mean, he was a legend, especially in Morgantown, the state of West Virginia. He did an unbelievable job, but we will do our best to uh, bring everybody the necessary information uh, of our beloved Mountaineers. Good deal, yeah. Well, you know, when I when um, when I went and searched for somebody, and I and I came across several people, you know, um, I had heard of you guys show but i've never watched you I, I really seriously i've never watched you so i went over there and started watching some of your videos hell i got hooked i mean i'd sit there and watch i must have watched you guys for three hours that day <laughs> when i when i found you guys and just sit there and watch videos for like three hours and watch some of your interviews and stuff you know great interview with don Nealon and things i mean you guys have some awesome guests and, and that's that was that excited me because then i knew Okay, we have some great guests on this show as well. You know, uh, Mark just interviewed Joe Manchin. We've had uh, yep. Ben Baker. We've had Neil Brown. We've had some uh, a lot of football players and uh, former football players as well. And you have great guests over on your show. So that kind of intrigued me as well to say, hey, here's somebody that can keep that going too because they're able to to uh, to get some guests. Uh, Wolfman uh, being on your show there, what was that, yesterday, wasn't it? Wolfman was yeah, yeah, yep. Last night, yeah. yep, we had Wolfman on. So, yeah, I mean, you know, um, and Wolfman does the Wolfman's Call right here on this channel um, every weekday, well, Monday through Thursday at 4 o'clock, for those of you that do not uh, know that. But the other Wolfman, Wolfley, uh, with Wolfman's Call, 4 o'clock, Monday through Thursday, right here on the Voice of College Football West Virginia channel. And then, uh, Ryan, now you and Rush are going to change your schedule up a little bit when you come over. And start over. We're not going to have a Friday night show at eight anymore, are we? Correct. We'll go Wednesday night. So kind of a middle of the week, especially with football season. I feel like Wednesday is kind of the dead time where we can almost kind of recap a little bit from the previous week and then really look ahead to Saturday's matchup, whoever we're playing next week. It'll be a Penn State guest. So uh, looking forward to diving into the Wednesday night schedule and getting our audience on a uh, weekly schedule where everybody expects the show to be at a certain time and we can really build this thing. And honestly, really excited about this opportunity and the upcoming season for the Mountaineers, whether it's football, basketball, and baseball. Yeah, yeah, me too. So let's talk a little bit about football. Let's talk to football because we're a week away. Well, actually, week zero starts tomorrow, and we talked yep. about that a little bit off the air there. That looking forward to watching Rich Rodriguez over there at Jackson State, Jackson, Jacksonville yep. State, and um, that, that'll be a good game. They're playing UTEP, you said. Is that what they're playing? Yeah, it's uh, it's their FBS uh, opener. So Rich Rod yeah. took over Jacksonville State after he was with uh, Coach Bowden down there at UL Monroe. Now he's over at Jacksonville State. His second year, they were FCS. So this is going to be the first FBS game, and it's I mean, for me, I know uh, people have their opinions on Rich Rod, but I I was a big Rich Rod guy. I liked the trajectory of the program during Rich Rod. I mean, heck, they were one game away from the national championship. And I know it ended in heartbreak fashion, but I, I like the way Rich Rod plays offense, the way he spreads, he guys going in motion, multiple guys uh, touching the ball in space, whether it was Slayton, Divine, all those guys. I always like watching Rich Rod's teams play offensively. He's so creative offensively. Yeah, he is. He really, he really is. 
Well, so we're going to have to be creative next week when we take on Penn State up yeah. in Happy Valley. You know, 107,000 screaming fans. Um, we we knew what the stadium was going to be, that it was going to be the one blue stripe uh, like they do a lot of games. It's almost a whiteout except for that one blue stripe. Um, they finally announced that and made that public. But, um, you know, Penn State's – if you ever wanted to play Penn State, which I do, I love playing Penn State. This is probably not the year you wanted to play Penn State, um, <laughs> yeah. West Virginia. You know, here you are coming off a five and seven season and not projected to do much better than that this year. Um, lost a lot of players, brought in some transfers, filled some holes, but now you're facing a Penn State team that is really, really solid, um, both offense and defense. Probably one of the better offensive lines in the country. Probably the best defensive line in the country. Uh, you know, they've got a quarterback, and a lot of people say, well, he's young, you know, we can shake him up, we can scare him. Hey, guys, he might be young, but he played in 10 games last year, you know, so he he's, he knows what he's doing. He, he can, he'll be able to have, have a head on his shoulder, and uh, it being a home game. If this game was in Morgantown, I'd give West Virginia a lot better chance, but, you know, but Allure's a good quarterback, or Alar, what is his name, Alar? I, I think it's Alar, yeah. Alar. You know, so he, he's a good quarterback, but man, that running back uh, tandem they got back there in that, in that backfield, they're pretty awesome. So, what do you, what do you, uh, it may ask you this West Virginia beats Penn State if, if, oh, put me right on the spot. I like it, Joey. I, um, West Virginia wins to pull off a top, top 10 upset on the road. I think you got to win the turnover margin by at least two turnovers. I know that's coach talk cliche, but uh, I mean, you're playing a really talented team. James Franklin going in his 10th year. It's by far their best team. Like you said, they're coming off a Rose bowl victory. They got 16 starters back. We talked to Wolf about it yesterday. They're good in the trenches. Uh, they're, they, they're strong, fast, athletic, and that place is going to be going bonkers. It's a whiteout. Like you said, it, it, this is, this is going to prepare them for the season. West Virginia wins if they win the turnover battle by two or more and they win the time of possession two to one. And I think they can actually do that with the new rules where the clock does not stop after every first down. So I think they, if you shorten the game, like an army Navy type stuff, run the ball with those talented backs behind that offensive line. I think that's got to be the blueprint and recipe to pull off a stunner. I mean, they're 20 point dogs for a reason. Right. Yeah, I, I agree with you. You know, if you huddle up, <clears throat> let the clock run, snap the ball with five seconds to go, uh, you know, every play, you can you can control the clock. <clears throat> and then if you can if you can get C.J. Donaldson going, and we've got a pretty daggone good offensive line ourselves, yep. um, if they can get some blocks and we can get that going, get that running game going, to where they're focusing on the running game, you know, maybe something opens up down the field for our quarterback. Now, um, Garrett Green, obviously, um, most likely the starter. Um, although we did have a lot of rumbling about Nico was going to be the starter this year, and we've all had our contacts say Nico was promised the job and Nico's getting the job. Um, I don't think that's so clear cut right now. I think Garrett's probably the, the front runner, and I, I agree with a lot of people. Garrett's a little short, can't see over the offensive line. Uh, one read and he runs. But he's so athletic that he gives you a chance when he does run. So uh, if Penn State can contain him, I think that that's going to open up receivers down the field. If they contain our running game and they go after C.J. Donaldson and stop on Garrett Green, put a spy on Garrett Green to try to stop that run, that's going to open up some passing lanes down the field. And Garrett Green's good enough to get that ball down the field, and we've got some talented receivers. So uh, – Go ahead. I'm yeah, like you yeah. No, I, I, I was, I was going to piggyback right off you. I do completely agree that I think they're going to face a lot of loaded boxes on Saturday night because, I mean, a top of the sky report. I mean, you're crazy if CJ Donaldson's not the top guy. I mean, we saw what he did in in, in flashes last year. Comes on the scene last year, goes for over a hundred yards against a good pit defense. I mean, he seven mm -hmm. carries, 125 yards. And then he goes down with an injury, and what, what happens? Jalen Anderson and Justin Johnson come right in and really come on strong in the last quarter of the year. And then the rumblings out of camp as well. A guy that keeps popping up is Jaheim White, the freshman running back 
uh, kind of a Swiss Army knife is what they're calling him. They're going to find a way to get him the ball. And um, Garrett Green's another guy that's got to use his legs too. So kind of different guys to be creative offensively. Neil's going to be calling the plays from what it sounds like. So he, I mean, in a year where it's pivotal for his job security, his future, he's going down with himself and he's got a lot of talented backs and a good offensive line. I think everybody agrees the the, the blueprint and the recipe for this team is pretty simple. Yeah. Um, so somebody in the chat, Tim, Timothy Green says, I've been following the Ryan Rush for a long time now. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Good deal, Tim. And, and Zachary Johnson says number five was a one read and run guy too. Yeah, he was for a while. Um, oh, we're talking about Pat. I was like, Pat. I was yeah. Just, I, I, yeah, I was thinking of last year Pat. and then I go, wait, there was nobody five. And I go, oh, yeah. we're talking about the, the number five. Yes. The yeah, number Pat. five. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. We got to specify the number five. Yeah. Maybe you wins if they capture I uh, on mistakes. I don't yep, know. Turnover that. battle. Yeah. I think turnover battle. Yep. Yeah. But yeah. So let me ask you a question. Um, I've always, I've also felt like this too. I, I agree with you that we need to win that turnover battle and we need to have some clock management. But another thing too, is we need to hold them to about 150 yards rushing. We need to hold them under 150 yards rushing. If they get 200 yards rushing. They're going to have a lot better chance of winning. I think we need to hold their running game to under 150. Um, uh, you know, yeah. Go ahead. I, I completely agree. I mean, if, if they're going to give up 200 yards on the ground, it's going to be a long night because that's going to open up uh, a LAR for, for more passing lanes down the field. So if they can't win in the trenches, it, like you said, it's going to be a long night. So, yeah, stopping the run and running the ball offensively, that's that's the blueprint. Yeah, we have we need we need to have about 200 yards rushing ourselves, mm -hmm. uh, maybe more. Uh, it'd be nice if uh, – wouldn't it be great if, if we just could um, have a Tavon Austin moment against Oklahoma from C.J. Donaldson in this game yeah. and him go out there and get about 400 all-purpose yards? I mean, that would be amazing. But, um, you know, I, I, look at the, I look at this Penn State team, and I know a lot of people do not – a lot of Penn State fans. I've heard from a lot of Penn State fans. They do not like James Franklin. Hey, look, James Franklin's a great coach. Look what he did at Vanderbilt. I mean, nobody can win at Vanderbilt. He did it, you know. Uh, three straight bowl games, you know, what with three ten win seasons, wasn't it, or nine win? Seasons? Uh, yeah, uh, to back to back nine win seasons. And Joey, to uh, to piggyback right off you, he's seventy eight and thirty six in nine years at Penn State. I know he I know. can't beat Ohio State and Penn or Ohio State and Michigan, but not a lot of not a lot of teams can. And maybe this is the year they finally get it done against those two. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I agree. So now, um, let's talk about the the wide receiver wide receiver core. I, I think they're they're a pretty good uh, wide receiver core, but with that with the quarterback and like I say, he's young, but he played ten games last year. He's got a pretty good arm. He's five star quarterback, so I think he can get the ball to him. What about our defensive backs? Are how are you feeling about our defensive backs this year, especially with all the new transfers in? Yeah, I, I, that's that's a concern of mine. I mean, you know, Penn State's going to want to push the ball downfield. They got some production coming back on on the perimeter, and I think you you mentioned it too. Like we got four guys from the portal in our in our back back four. Um, whether it's uh, Montre Miller, uh, Keyshawn Cobb, Anthony Wilson, the guy that really keeps uh, popping up in, in camp, it sounds like, is Beanie Bishop from Minnesota. So. Got a lot, a big transition, and they're going to be thrown right into the fire at, at Happy Valley. Um, yeah, it's they, they're it, this is going to be a good challenge for the secondary. You know what I like, Joey? Um, I, it reminds me of when we played Alabama in Atlanta. Well, we were coming off a four and eight year. I think it was 2014. Clint Trickett was uh, had just won the job. And everybody thought we were going to get killed by Alabama. And, and we ultimately ended up losing the game. But we were right there with Alabama, uh, toe for toe. I think we were tied at the half. And I think that really set the tone for a good season that year, playing Alabama right out of the gates. I think playing Penn State, it's going to be tough to get a win there, obviously. But I think it's going to set them up for success in the Big 12, being battle-tested right off the bat. Oh, I, I agree with you 100%. You know, I think our – 
our biggest thing is we need to come away from that game without any key in- injuries, right? You know, I mean, yeah. we're going to have some bumps and bruises. We're going to be beat up a little bit. Um, it's fire five football that happens every week, but at the same time, um, you know, if we can if we can get out of that game without any major injuries or anything like that, it will help this team a whole lot. I, I agree with that one hundred percent. Jackson Johnson makes a great point here. The complaining of James Franklin feels similar to when Michigan fans complained about Harbaugh prior to 2021 Ohio State. I agree. You know, we had um, Steve Deese uh, from Michigan. Uh, Actually, it was on Golden Blue Dude. Um, We had him on there. And I asked Steve um, what what Harbaugh needed to do to keep his job. You know, because back in 2020, everybody remembers, Harbaugh was on the hot seat. And he said, he said, well, he needs to win. He needs to win to be 10 and it's, it's just not going to happen, you know, and everybody was still down to that. Jarball couldn't win the, win the big games. And then he come out and then he did it 2021, 2022. And now here we are going in 2023 season. Michigan looks like a pretty good team again. So, you know, I don't think they're saying that, that stuff anymore about Jim Harbaugh. And that same thing could hold true for James Franklin. Look, more than anything in the world, I'd love for the Mountaineers to go up there and knock Penn State off. But if they don't, hey, Penn State's a, a top five team this year, without a doubt, and with any, without any question in my mind. Uh, I think the I think Jackson's right. He's right right there. I mean, they said the exact same thing about Jim Harbaugh, and all he's done is just beat the you-know-what out of Ohio State the last couple of years. And not just beat him. I mean, physically dominate them. I think it's time for Penn State. I mean, uh, I think it, they are getting a little bit of hype in terms of they're already talking about the Ohio State and the Michigan game. You got eight games before that, so you got don't don't uh, don't don't worry about or don't forget about the seven games before that. But I I do agree that James Franklin's kind of got a bad rap. I mean, they're coming off a Rose Bowl win where they dominated Utah, eleven and two. He's got multiple eleven win seasons. Yeah, he hasn't been able to beat Ohio State and Michigan consistently. But those two are in the top five every single year. I mean, Ryan Day is all of a sudden on the hot seat too, and all he's done is just lose the hardball twice back yeah. to back years. So, yeah, I th- I think uh, it, sometimes, man, some of these fan bases are so unrealistic. But yeah, Penn State they they're in a good spot program wise, especially if Alar is the guy that could really propel them, kind of like Burrow uh, propelled LSU over Alabama mm-hmm. with with Coach O. So we see it with with these. Uh, generational quarterbacks whether it's cam newton at auburn johnny manziel at texas m tebow at florida you're in that a we're in that what eight to 12 range top 15 and then all of a sudden you get the generational talent and you can win a national championship yeah i know i'm um, going in, into the season my top four my my four playoff teams uh on my, my way too early to predict this calendar is alabama texas usc and penn state um, I think Texas has what it takes to run the Big 12 this year. I think Texas, Texas is going to be really tough, though. I think uh, Texas Tech is going to be a very good team in, in the Big 12 this year. But I think Texas probably going to run the table in the Big 12, uh, make a playoff. USC, I feel like they can run the table in the pack um, and, and make the playoffs. But will they play defense? You know, it's Lincoln Riley after at USC, so I worry about yeah. that. But but this Penn State team, we all know about Alabama. There's no even talking about them. But this Penn State team's something special. When you look at the um, the size and the depth and the coaching staff, you know they've got a great coaching staff in place. The culture, the tradition, the fan base, mm-hmm. everything they've got going for them right now. This is Penn State's year. Yeah, I mean, I, I hope I hope that we keep them out of the playoff because that means that we we beat them. But I think, like you said, the the stars are aligned for them. They get Michigan at home. They got to go to Ohio State. Ohio State's got a tough schedule too. They got to go to Notre Dame. They got to go to Wisconsin. Um, I'm not as high on Texas as as uh, as the public. I've seen this this script go over and over again. Is Texas back? So I will uh, I'll be fading Texas sneak peek. Uh, on my Big 12 preview show, but uh, I, yeah, you know, exactly right there says Texas will lose at least two in conference games. Amen, brother. <laughs> and they're going to be taking everybody's best shot. Is and I mean, Brett Yormark's already. He said what everybody was thinking. Uh, we're rooting for Texas Tech on that Black Friday. So I, you know, 
you don't see teams in the Big 12 go back to back a lot, but I'm looking at Kansas State as a potential team out of the Big 12 to do it once again. And maybe they can go 11 and 1. They bring back their whole offensive line. Will Howard's back. I love that culture with Chris Kleiman um, mm-hmm. coming over from North Dakota State in his fifth year. They beat TCU. Everybody remembers TCU's run. K State beat him in the Big 12 championship. Uh, bring back a bunch of uh, guys on the defense. I think K State is uh, got a chance if if they could stay healthy, especially on the offensive line. They got to replace Deuce Vaughn, but they got a ward from Florida State. I really like um, just that culture altogether. I wish I wish uh, West Virginia was more like K State to be honest with the way that they are so physical on the offense and defensive side. Yeah, they are. They are really physical, uh, and and that goes all the way back to. Snyder days, you know. I mean, yes. they, they, he, he, he instilled that He's in that mess. program. Yeah, yeah, he was. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm trying to read some sad here. Uh, and so Timothy says his number one concern in the game against Penn State is injuries. I, I, I agree with that. That's, that's probably not my number one concern. Uh, my number one concern is, uh, can we, can we uh, stop them and can we move the ball? <laughs> That's yeah. my number one concern against Penn State. Can we stop them and can we move the ball? It, um, it, jo- Joey, it would be really nice if we could get out to like a 7-0 lead and take the crowd a little bit out of it. Because like, if you get punched in the mouth right off the get-go, and we talked about it, they're going to have to run the ball to stay in the game. If you fall behind 14 nothing, it's a lot harder to play ball control, run the ball. So if they can get off, maybe get the ball first, force an early turnover, get off to maybe a 7-0, 10-0 lead. Just put a little bit of pressure on Penn State. Let's see that young quarterback when he's got to come back from 7 to 10 points. That would be really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, I think I, – I don't know. I, I mean, you know, we've got, we've got a coaching staff that's in place that knows – that's watching these players, watching Garrett Green, watching Nico Marchio. Here's my fear. Um if Nico doesn't get to play, mm-hmm. we lose him at the end of the year. And I worry about that. Now, on the same on the same flip side, though, Garrett Green does have shades of that Pat White mobility and, and yeah. the shiftiness and the speed. So, yeah, could he be a quarterback for us for the next couple of years to, to really take us back up there to the promised land? Maybe. But Nico, Nico's a fantastic quarterback, you know, was highly recruited by a lot of lot of big teams and it settled for West Virginia. If the rumors are true and he was promised a starting job this year and now is not going to get it, that's going to create some problems, I believe. Yeah, I, I can't really speak to the rumors about if, if he was promised a job. I don't know um, if he was and then he's not going to start. Then, yeah, that's going to there's already going to be some friction. Uh, quick, quick background about myself. I worked for for hugs uh, on the basketball side of things for uh, seven years. And then he, I was with Frank Martin down in South Carolina when we went to the final four. So I was a video coordinator, did all the scouting and stuff. That's a little background on me and how I got into the um, content side of things with you guys, Joey. I think if you're worried about a guy leaving via the transfer portal, they're going to leave anyway. So I just think that you got to play the best guys, especially for Neil. I mean, this is put up or shut up. I mean, you got to win this year. I don't think, I think the last thing you're worried about is if somebody's feelings are hurt. And if they're going to transfer, I like, I like Nico. I, I think he's going to be a good quarterback. I hope it's with us, but if it happens that he, he leaves, he leaves. I mean, especially in this transfer portal and NIL era where guys are transferring two, three times. I mean, it is what it is. I don't get surprised when anybody leaves anymore. I mean, we'll, we'll talk about basketball here in a little bit. Basketball is a complete, you know, what show. I mean, it's, I mean, there's everybody loses half their roster via the transfer portal with NIL involved. So I just, I think you got to play the best guys. The locker room knows. And if you're not playing the best guy, you're doing a disservice to the other 90 plus guys in the room. Speaking of NIL, we interviewed uh, Senator Joe Manchin, who along with Tommy Tuberville are writing an NIL bill uh, for Congress to try to uh, pass through. So be sure and catch that interview with uh, Mark Rogers. Um, It, I'm not sure if we posted it here on the West Virginia channel or just on the main channel, but just search for uh, the Voice of College Football and and search for Joe Manchin, and you'll find uh, you'll find that interview. 
and uh, it was just basically a, an interview on NIL. So you can see where the Congress is leading with this. I'm one of the type, I don't want politi politicians deciding my college football. But I'm also understanding that at this point, something's got to be done about NIL. Um, you know, it's getting out of hand. But uh, NCAA is not doing anything about <laughs> anything because they, they get sued every time they turn around. And hell, now they're getting sued again. So <laughs> They <laughs> suck, afraid. don't they? <laughs> <laughs> they do. They're really bad. I mean, <laughs> and they can't win in these lawsuits. They probably would, would maybe set their foot down a few times if they could win a lawsuit, but they can't. No, so, no. So, you know, that uh, maybe their hands are tied. I don't know. But, uh, but you know, they, if they give you that pay-for-play rule and then, and then people could tie a player to a university and make them play there, that would help a transfer portal out a lot. That's all they'd have to do is give you that pay-for-play rule. Just say, okay, now you can pay-for-play. Just They're getting paid to play already. You might as well just let them tie it to something. But uh, anyway, um, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to catch up a chat here, see what's going on. Uh, Let's see what uh, Chris says. If Brown gets fired, I see both Garrett and Nico leaving anyways. Um, You know, possible, but I don't think that's really like likely. I don't think I don't think we lose too many players if uh, Brown gets fired, myself. But at the same time, anytime a coach leaves a program, you're going to lose some players. There's going to be some players that, that came to play just for Coach Brown. I think Nico and Garrett like Coach Brown and want to play for him. But at the same time, I don't think they're set on them. I think they're set on Morgantown. I think they like Morgantown more. Um, I I also think, like, guys are going to leave regardless in, in this NIL transfer portal era. So it's it's like you can't really for, – it's hard to forecast who's going to leave. You're going to get blindsided by a couple guys leaving. So, um, yeah, I – just say uh, I see a couple guys in the chat as well. Uh, they, they just they agree to play the best guys. If Garrett Green gives us the best opportunity to win football games, I think you got to play them or play him. Sorry, uh, because because the locker room knows. So I posted the link uh, to Streamyard in the chat. If anybody wants to come in here, or have any questions for Ryan or myself, or just wants to talk a little bit of college football, college kickoff football is tomorrow. Next week's big game for West Virginia against Penn State. I'm um, looking forward to, to that one a lot. Um, so anyway, the StreamYard links are in the chat. Uh, just click on it, follow the instructions, type your name in, come on in. You don't have to be on camera, but you will need to be on camera in the back room so I can see you're a real person and that uh, you really want to come in and talk college football. So... All right, Ryan. So tell us, tell me something now. You you caught us up, and we've got a few more people in here now. I want to do this again. So a lot of people know Golden Blue Dude started. Well, I yeah. started this last year channel with Mark Rogers, and Golden Blue Dude did the hosting of the show. When Golden Blue Dude passed away, I kind of took over as host, but I'm not a show host, and been looking for somebody ever since I started doing it, and and finally came across Ryan and Rush show, and. I mean, they got an excellent channel over there. I, I, the first time I started watching my set for like three hours watching videos. So get over there and, and subscribe to Ryan and Rush and, 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 and get caught up on their videos. Great interviews over there. Great interview with Don Needlin as well. So be sure and, and check that out. But Ryan, tell them a little bit about your background again and, and, and um, what, what night you're going to have your show on here. Yeah, so we're going to do Wednesday nights. Um, that way, it's kind of in the middle of the week for everybody. Sometimes Friday nights, I think, could be tricky. People got plans. Uh, I know we got some married men and women out there, so they may have plans with the wife or husband or got kids out there. So we're going to do Wednesday night. Uh, I feel like that's the most downtime. It's in the middle. We can preview uh, the upcoming game, recap the action from the previous weekend, and get some good guests on to, to preview these games that we're talking about. A little bit about myself, and you guys will meet Rush uh, on Wednesday when we move the show from Friday night to Wednesday night. We host the Ryan and Rush show. We've been doing it for about a year. I know some of you already subscribed, and we appreciate it, and we, uh, we, we really like the direction that's going. And uh, I, We both grew up in uh, Northern Virginia, the Fairfax area, so right outside Washington, D.C., but we can both consider ourselves West Virginians because we both went to school there. I lived there for a decade. 
I worked for Bob Huggins and that coaching staff for, for almost a decade of my life. So I've, uh, I'm a proud Mountaineer. I love this school. I, I want the school to win. I want all our teams to win football, basketball, uh, baseball. And I just want the best for West Virginia. And I grown to, I mean, I I've learned to love the state. I mean, 1.8 million, man. And it's, uh, it, it's, uh, we are the pro team. The Mountaineers are the pro team. So it's, uh, yeah. it's, there's no place like it. I mean, you go to Pittsburgh, you got the pirates, you got other teams or Cincinnati, you got the reds, you got the Bengals. So, there's nothing like the state of West Virginia, everybody getting behind uh, the golden blue. So that's a little bit about us. And we are really excited to uh, this opportunity present itself with Joey and Mark and appreciate them um, having us on. And, and like you said, we're replacing a legend in the golden blue dude. Um, and we're just going to honor him every episode and continue to live out his legacy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Chris is a great guy. Yeah. Good. Anybody that never had a chance to meet golden blue dude, you, you really, uh, you really missed out. I mean, he was he was a fun guy. The exact same guy you've seen on video was the exact same guy he was in person. There was no difference. I mean, he didn't meet a stranger. He yep. talked to everybody. Always had a smile on his face. Always happy. And just, you know, the only time I ever remember him being a little upset was he was in an accident one time, a car accident. And it was just a little fender bender. But he got punched. <laughs> Right in the eye. Oh yeah, <laughs> and, and uh, yeah. So uh, that's the only time I ever remember. He, he called me at that moment, and he's like, "I'm so damn mad." <laughs> but anyway, that that wasn't like Golden Blue dude at all. So yeah. Um, well, you know, let me ask you this. Let's talk about the basketball team for a second. Since Huggins, you know, is, is no longer there, um, we lost some players. We gained some players. We lost some players, and damn players came back. We got a couple of additional transfers that seemed like mm -hmm. they're going to be pretty daggone good. We still got the number one transfer class in the country. Yep. How good can this basketball team be this year? Uh, I, th I think they can be good. I think they can get to the tournament and, and win games. And I know it's crazy that uh, it's going to be an interim basis for now. I, I think Josh is going to have a chance to keep the job after this year. Um, I was one. Of, I think I was one of the very few that wanted Josh to get the job. I know everybody had an opinion when Hugs – um, ultimately ended up uh, not coming back af after the second incident. So I thought Josh is the right guy for the job in a, in a time of chaos. Josh Eilert, I I've worked for him for uh, almost a decade. Like I said, with he's been with hugs every step of the way, even kill guy from Kansas K state guy, good family, man, professional that staff's going to give a professional professional effort. And they've done a really good job with all things considered with, with, with the chaos. I mean, being able to keep Kirk Creesa, um, Jesse Edwards. Hopefully we get some good news on Raekwon Battle this next month. And uh, Jose Perez end up coming back. We lost a couple guys, but nobody that we can't replace. And I think it, if those guys stick together, and I think it's a tight-knit group right now in that locker room because of the chaos and kind of backs to the wall. And I think that's a team that this state uh, can really get behind. I think Mountaineer Nation likes being the underdog, and we're going to see it with football on Saturday, next Saturday. But I, I think I, I really think that this uh, community is really going to grow to love this basketball team. And I think Josh is going to give a good effort. And that staff, Deshaun, everybody remembers Deshaun Butler. I mean, the Butler did it. 2010 Final Four run, Alex Ruoff, uh, Tamar Johnson, Jordan McCabe's back. Uh, Jay Koontz and that sports staff have done a great job uh, managing the transfer portal. So it's going it, to, it's, you never know until you see it on the court how they're going to mesh with the transfer portal because there's only five guys and they're starting five new guys. But I, I, I think they have a chance to be really good. And I think also Josh is going to, they're going to guard like, uh, like Hugs did, but I think they're going to be different offensively. I think Josh is going to play faster, um, implement some new concept, new principles, new sets, uh, play faster in the transition open floor where it's going to be an exciting brand of basketball. So that's, that's my two cents on August the 25th. But hey, basketball season's gonna be here before we know it, Joey. I know it. I know it. I'm looking forward to it. So can we bring back? Can we bring back that defense? Uh, mm -hmm. is, do you think Josh is one that can bring back that that stingy defense we've had for several years under Huggins? Uh, I think a good step was going to get a guy like Jesse Edwards who blocked three three uh, blocks a game at Syracuse, and then a cook a cook two blocks a game at UConn. So yeah, he got a one two punch, be able to protect the rim. <laughs> I mean, hey, 
Uh, you got those two guys behind him. They can erase a lot of mistakes. Even you and I could be able to guard and let the guy go by us if we knew those two guys were at the rim blocking shots. <laughs> yeah. All right, we got somebody in the back room who wants to come in and ask us a question. Mr. Jackson Johnson. What do you say, Jackson? What's going on, buddy? Uh, it's going pretty good. How's it going, guys? Doing, Doing good, good man. man. Doing good. What's on your mind tonight? I uh, just want to go over a little bit how we're one more day away from week zero and how next week is the start of the real appetite week one. That's right. That's right. Oh, yeah. So what games are you going to watch tomorrow, Jackson? Probably, I know you, you're going to watch, watch them all if you can, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll be watching Notre Dame, Navy, Ohio, San Diego state, San Jose state, USC, probably watch a little bit of Jatsville state. Cause I mean, number one, that's my mama's alma mater. And secondly, Rich Rod's there. I'm curious to see what he's going to bring. He's going to be fantastic, let's be real. And a couple others. If if it weren't for Wheat Zero, I probably wouldn't be watching UMass New Mexico State. So. <laughs> right. You might get some action on these games, Jackson. Mm, could be. Yeah, <laughs> throw five bucks on it. I mean, late night action, yeah. Yeah, it's always it's always the best time to bet. It's week zero because that's yep. generally the games you know what's going to happen for the most part, you know, and you 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 feel a bit more comfortable in your bets. Week one is when it gets a little bit tougher, <laughs> you know. Um, so, but well, now now uh, Jackson, what about uh, West Virginia week one, Penn State? What's your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, I'm pretty happy that's coming back for a little bit. You know, but I just can't wait to see Pittsburgh, West Virginia week three. Now that's a rivalry right there. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I'm curious to see what uh, Todd's taste of the town's going to be on NBC next Saturday because <laughs> he'll be calling that game. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Jackson's not a Mountaineer fan, but, but Jackson knows a, a lot about college football. One, one, one of the, the smartest guys you'll ever meet when it comes to college football and, and these teams and knowing these teams and, and everything else. So high praise it for him. Jackson, you got any, you got any other questions for us or anything? I was about all for now, but one guy to watch for is Curtis Rourke. He's coming back from an ACL injury. He's the Ohio quarterback. Watch yeah. for him to have a big game against San Diego state tomorrow. Yeah, okay. and Jackson, he's uh he he's the Mac or defending Mac player of the year, if I'm not mistaken. So Ohio State uh, or Ohio, sorry, Ohio <laughs> U has a lot of good talented guys coming back. The Bobcats, not the Buckeyes. So yeah, no, I'm I'm looking forward to watching that Ohio San Diego State because uh Brady Hoax there, the guy that uh at San Diego State, the guy that replaced Rich Rod at Michigan. Yeah. Well, funny thing about um Next week is going to be the first time we see a Big Ten game on CBS. Well, and NBC. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's going to be fun. Yeah. Last time Penn State was on NBC was when they played Notre Dame. Yeah. Uh, and Ohio State, you know, last time they were on CBS when they played you guys in 1998. Yep. Which team is yours, Jackson? Alabama. Oh, roll tide roll. Yeah. I, I, like, I, I like I like the tide this year, man. I think everybody's sleeping on him. I think Nick Saban's getting back to his old roots of running the football and playing defense, and they'll they'll figure out the quarterback position. Yeah, man. I, I you to your point about that Joe Manchin interview, Joey. That was a pretty awesome interview. I watched yeah. a lot of it. It was pretty cool. Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I don't like politicians trying to solve our college football uh, problems, like I said, but. Obviously, the NCAA is not doing a daggone thing, and, and it needs to be fixed. And so, I don't know. You know, you can't really leave it up to each conference to try to buckle down and fix it because we'd have all this different stuff going on. There has to be some kind of a governing body to decide this stuff. And, you know, if, you, if, if the NCAA is just going to sit there, then, then I'm all for Congress passing something so long as it doesn't you know, affect the game uh, so much as, as long as what they do just keeps NIL in line, you know, and, and, and things I I'm happy for that. But now when they start getting into uh, more of the game, if they start wanting to pass things that are going to 
keep players at a school and not allow them to transfer to another school. I wouldn't agree with that. But at the same yeah. time, you know, there's got to be something done about NIL and this transfer portal altogether. I don't think, I think it's fine for a player to transfer. I just think that uh, if they transfer, they should have to set out a year and then bottom line, you know, and, and that, that will keep a lot of players at, at, at school. If you think about it, when they got rid of that rule, that's when the transfer portal started lighting up, you know, I mean, it, it was that rule right there uh, that you don't have to set out a year, you know, that, that it started lighting up. But. Well, I mean, you know, just don't have it be like JT Daniels where where he's just kind of like have a have go will travel card sign where it's like, hey, yeah. uh, we need JT Daniels. Here's my card. <laughs> he's yeah. going over USC, Georgia, West Virginia, Rice. Probably yeah. next year he's going to go over to UTEP. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh, he might end uh, up at Jack State. <laughs> I, it's going to be interesting to see if he gets benched at Rice, like he's gotten benched everywhere else. <laughs> I want to see if he gets benched at Rice. You know, I, I, I liked him. He was, he was a good quarterback, but uh, you know, obviously he wasn't moving our team like he should been. And and Gary Green came in and gave us a big spark, and and did uh, a good job. So, yeah, I can't yeah. wait to see what West Virginia brings in the 2023 season. It's going to be fantastic watching them. I can guarantee you this much. It's going to be either fantastic or absolutely miserable. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. you know, it's, it's going to be – because a 6-6 six and six season, to me, that's going to be pretty miserable for me. I, I, mm, I want us yeah. to win at least eight games, you know. And, and it's not looking likely to win eight games. But I'd like for us to be six and six. I'm gonna be a little disappointed. Seven to five, I'll be a little bit happier, you know. At least we've shown some progress and flipped the script from last year being five and seven. But I really want that eight wins, um, you know. And and at West Virginia, it, it's true we're just not used to it at West Virginia. You you know, even though we've had last last few years have been down, we're not used to that. You know, we we are a proud program mm -hmm. since far back as I can remember. You know, I was going to games back in the 70s when we had Bobby Bowden and and we had decent football teams. We weren't the greatest, but we had decent football teams. But when Don Needling came in and turned that program around, things started changing in the 80s, and West Virginia all of a sudden became a powerhouse in football. And it wasn't unreal to say West Virginia's going to win 9, 10 games this year. It wasn't unusual to say that at all. Now... It's unusual to say West Virginia's going to win nine or ten games. It's, and, and I don't. I, we need to get that that script flipped back as well. So that's what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping for an eight and four season. Uh, expecting more like six and six, mm -hmm. but I'm hoping yeah. for eight and four. I'll be I'll be okay with seven and five. But I think bottom line, in my opinion, Neil Brown loses to Penn State. He's safe, right? There's nobody yeah. expecting that victory. Um. But if we lose it back to our broader pit, I think Neil Brown, even if he's not fired by, by the administration that night, uh, the fan base will fire him that night oh, if yeah. we lose the pit again. Uh, Joey, I was going to ask you, um, kind of play the the path. You're talking about eight wins. Like, what we get, let's play the path on how to get to eight wins because I think – this this schedule's hard. I mean, you got eleven Power Five games. Uh, that's I think we're like one of five or six teams that play Power Five. I think it's us and like Pitt and a couple others. The game, I'm with you, Joey. The game that's going to decide the whole season, and they have an inside track to get to a bowl. They have got to beat Pitt on September 16th. They cannot lose that game. If they yeah. lose to Pitt, the season's over. I mean, it's right. I, I hate to I hate to overreact like that because I'm usually it's never as good as it seems, never as bad as it seems. But if they don't beat Pitt at home in prime time in front of that crowd, you might as well throw away the season. So um, what what games, what other pivotal games are you looking there where you think they could pick somebody off? Are you looking at maybe TCU on the road? They've always played TCU well. Neil's, Neil's only lost to TCU once, and it was last year against their greatest team ever, and we should have won the game. That offside penalty where yeah. where y'all went offsides, that was like, that hurt you right there. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I'm looking at like, and, and I'm trying to find my charts, and I can't find them. I, I apologize, but I did have charts 
Um, because well, I Texas this, Tech I is a home right game now. on September 23rd. Right. So here's what I was. Here's what I did though. Is I looked at our schedule and I said, okay, Penn State game one, we're going to lose that game. I'm just going to go ahead and chalk it up for a loss. Pitt, I think we can beat Pitt. I think we're a better team than Pitt this year. I think we beat Pitt. All right, but if you'll look at our, our Big 12 schedule that starts right after Pitt, look at the teams these teams are having to play before they play us. Like for instance, Oklahoma. Yeah. has to play Oklahoma State the week before us. That's a rivalry game. It's going to be the very last time they play in the foreseeable future. Yeah. It's one of the biggest robberies in college football. And now all of a sudden, they, they're going to play that game. If if Oklahoma beats Oklahoma State, uh, they could beat them twice because we'd end up beating them the next week. So, I mean, there's, I just look at things like that, and I've been, and I've been looking. And if you'll look back, like um, – I, I can't remember who it is. Texas Tech or TCU one has to play uh, Houston and Baylor both the two weeks before. Those are robbery games. So you know you're, you're playing a couple of robbery games, and they're not going. And Houston's going to be out for blood down there in Texas. They want that recruiting right. battle, so they're going to play as hard as they can. You know Dana's going to have them players playing really oh, yeah. good offense. Well, uh, they may not have the best defense, but he can upset some teams. And to go in there and and play if if, if it's TCU or Texas Tech, whoever, they got to play them the week before they play us. That there's a chance that you know they could come in a little bit down. So that's where I'm looking at as saying there's a chance we could win eight games, but you have to look at the schedules and hope that things fall in place, you know, and and help you out. Well, Central Florida, you know, they have like this weird thing where they win games that they shouldn't and they lose games they shouldn't. That, you know, and the fact that Central Florida on November 4th is going to Morgantown, that could help West Virginia a little bit, that home field sure. advantage. So, I yeah. mean, maybe we could see an upset on that game. I I think so. I, I, you probably we probably think Penn State's going to beat the Mountaineers unless the oh, Mountaineers play it. out of their mind. I mean, yeah, they're probably going to lose that. So you're probably zero and one. I think, and you're going to beat the Kansas. So we'll say one and one. I think you got to look at that those next three games, and you got to find a way to go two and one. The Pitt, Texas Tech, and at TCU, and and Texas Tech's been our kryptonite for some reason under Neil Brown. It's been a lot of letdown games, whether it's the Oklahoma game a couple years ago or. Uh, last year we beat Baylor at home and then we just completely get drilled out in Lubbock. So, I mean, if you go two and one there after the one and one start, then all of a sudden you're at what um, three and two headed into Houston and you kind of break it up. Uh, Jackson, you talked about that central Florida, Oklahoma state, Houston next, uh, next three, four games there and BYU. I'll throw that in there. If you can find a way to get three out of four there, I mean, Houston, UCF, and BYU, they're all newcomers. Yeah, they're, they're okay. And Oklahoma State's always good with Gundy. You got to win three out of those four. And so that would get you to, what, seven in – sorry, I'm losing my math here. Uh, no, that would get you to, what, six in three with three to go? Six and three with three to go if you can win mm-hmm. two out of three in that other stretch and then three out of four. Then you go yeah. Oklahoma uh, – Cincinnati and Baylor, and you got to f- steal one of those on the road. So I think oh, that's your path. Easy. Yeah, now, Cincinnati, now, one thing they Jackson, don't have Luke Fickle anymore. One yeah. thing, Jackson, I was thinking UCF, we play them at Florida. I think, we yeah, we're at UCF. the we're down in Orlando. Yeah. Oh, yeah, mom, yeah, I made a mistake at that Central Florida. My bad, yeah, that BYU but, but is gonna be the BYU's coming to Morgantown, Cincinnati's coming to Morgantown. So, you know, that's that's uh we, we play all four of the newcomers so yeah central florida man they are they're they're a real jekyll and hyde team that's the thing yeah. about them i mean last year they beat Tulane, and then next week they wind up losing the navy it's like good if lord you, you can't if do you that. can if you can protect home field that's six wins and then you gotta find it find two on the road whether it's tcu or houston that double trip get one of those and then maybe Central Florida or Oklahoma. So, I mean, we've been playing Oklahoma well the last couple of years, and I don't think they're as good right. as they've been in the past. And Baylor's a sleepy spot. So, yeah, I mean, you protect home field, six wins at home, and then you got to find two on the road somewhere. So Zach says the FCS, 
Pitt, Oklahoma State, Baylor, UCF, BYU, Cincinnati, Houston, eight wins. Yeah. So and basically, those are all, all possible. The, those are yeah. every one of them are possible. So, um, the UCF one, I'm I'm not sure about, but you know, that that's that's a possibility. You know, it it helps that they don't get Texas and K State. Those are the preseason one and, and two in the polls. Right, that helps tremendously. That's that. Yeah. Web has got one of the toughest schedules in the country, but they've also got one of the uh, best schedules in the Big Twelve when you when you're playing yeah. all four of the newcomers plus. Uh, you're not playing Texas and Texas uh, and Kansas State. Now we do have to play Texas Tech, and and like I say, I think Texas Tech probably the second best team in the conference this year behind Texas. And uh, I know I'll be rooting for Texas Tech to beat Texas, just like everybody else will. But um, Kansas State's not far behind right there at number three is who I, where I have them. So I, I think the I, look. I'm not saying West Virginia is going to be. A, a very a very great team okay they're going to be a decent yeah. team i think i think really seriously i think we go to a bowl game but it's more like a six and six uh team you know or maybe a seven to five but a six and six team um i do not think uh we're the worst team in the big 12 like everybody says i i think we will finish probably around eight but uh, i do not i do not put us uh last so, no jackson yeah, do you yeah. think we're the worst team in the big 12 no, I think Cincinnati is, I think. Because, I mean, Satterfield's a disaster. I mean, he was mediocre at Louisville. He's going to be the same mediocre disaster at Cincinnati. I mean, what compels Cincinnati to hire him in the first place? I mean, to tell you the truth, I was thinking about, do I put Houston as the worst team, or do I put Cincinnati as the worst team in the Big 12? I believe I got Cincinnati, but I could check it. Well, Dana but, Holgerson has Houston as the worst team in the Big 12 if you listen to his press conferences. And, you know, yeah. and he's probably right. I mean, he he's probably right. He knows what they've got to have to win in the Big 12, and they yeah. do not have it. And 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 Dana Holgerson does not mince words about For sure. If, if, he, if he feels like a team's not going to be very good, he tells you they're not. we're not going to be a very good team this year. I, and, but on I, the bright side for Cincinnati is they're going to have a – a game on the CW. It's way better than a rerun of Riverdale on the CW. <laughs> More than the Pac-12 is getting in it. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. Pac-12, don't don't come after me. <laughs> oh, no, they've they've done that to themselves, Joey. But uh, yeah, yeah, I I think uh, I think getting all four newcomers that was crucial in avoiding K State and Texas. But you you, you mentioned Houston. Like I, I, everybody's down on them. The other thing is, could Dana be trying to pull one on everybody? I mean, he's got the second most active wins in the Big 12 right now because he's coached so many years at West Virginia in the Big 12. The only guy he's behind right now in the league is uh, Gundy in Stillwater, who, in my opinion, is the best, probably the best coach in the Big 12 right now. Well, the other yeah. team in the Big 12 that has all four newcomers is Oklahoma State. Yeah, so Oklahoma State, Oklahoma State, West Virginia – are two of the ten teams that are playing all four of the newcomers. The other eight are playing at least one of the four newcomers. I yeah. think um, I, I I agree with you that that a good, he's a good coach, but I think that Lance Leipold is probably the best coach in the Big Twelve. Oh yeah, man. Yeah. I mean Lance Leipold. I mean I don't know why people are so low on Kansas. I mean they're. They're pretty much like one of the best teams of the Big 12 in my book. I mean, when Jalen Daniels that high healthy, yet, but I don't think they're that high yet, but I could see Kansas winning seven or eight games this year. I wonder Morgan. if game day will go there again this year. I think they're going to come to Morgantown here uh, week three. I looked, I did a sneak peek on that schedule. I, I, it's a kind of a softer <laughs> oh, schedule. I think they're going to, I think they're going to come for the pick game. I mean, you're telling me game day is going to turn down the backyard brawl. They're going to choose like a other ranky dink game. No, they're yeah. going to go to the backyard brawl. Yeah, yeah. It, it drew a good number last year. And uh, the other guy, I like Leipold. The other guy, I already talked to uh, uh, Kleiman at K State. I mean, he yeah. won all those national oh, championships man. at North Dakota State. He does a good job. And he's, he, Joe, you talked about it. He did a great job coming in and just being a, Basically, a piggyback and just taking it to another level. What Bill Snyder did—they're the exact same team, right. exact same culture, the way they play, 
And that's why I I think that they're going to win championships over the next decade as long as Kleiman uh, stays there. I think they're going to be agree. the premier program. I, I agree. I think they are going to be one of the better programs in the Big 12, uh, without a doubt. And hoping that uh, my Mountaineers will get up there, too. Um, yep. you know, and, and listen, I'm not rooting against Neil Brown at all. I don't want Neil Brown fired. I want him to be able to keep his right. job. I'd love to see him come out this year and win eight games and, and keep his job, you know, and and maybe, you know, do even better next year. I, I would love nothing more. But his maybe. track record at West Virginia is not real well. But I take a lot of things into, into consideration, okay? Dana Hogerson left him a mess in 2019. I mean, he came into a depleted football program. That had lost a lot up of that 2018 team. You know, that was a very good team. We lost a lot. And then COVID hit in 2020. And you got to remember Neil Brown, he hadn't ever recruited Power 5 players. He recruited a group of five players. He was at Troy. So yeah. now he didn't know these Power 5 players that he's trying to recruit. And here he is in 2020, and he can't go meet these players. He can't, can't get to know them. So I think I think that's hurt him a little bit. I don't think he knew how to handle that uh, because he is a people person and he does want to get out there and meet these players and talk to them one on one. And he generally does a good job when he when he gets a good talk to them of, of getting them to Morgantown. And if you can get a player to Morgantown, you're going to most likely get them to sign yep. uh, on the dog yeah. line. So. Well, I'll tell you, I really hope that Neil Brown can have an awesome year this year. I mean. Maybe it could be like Dabo Sweeney in 2011 when everybody everybody was down on Dabo going into 2011. But then once Clemson was playing Auburn on week three at 11 a.m. on ABC, they really went the town on Auburn and then just smacked around Florida State week four. Then week five smacked around Virginia Tech. Maybe we could see something like that for West Virginia. I'm not saying we will, but I'm saying maybe we could see something like that. I hope so, but I'm just like, I don't know. Yeah, Honestly. I mean, if you think about it, last year Kansas was picked last in the Big 12. They didn't finish last. They went to a bowl yeah. game. You know, so um, these these uh, these polls mean absolutely nothing. Now, Zero. at the same time, I agree with them that we are probably one of the bottom tier teams, but not the worst. Um, you know, maybe right. eighth, maybe eighth place, like I said, but definitely not not the worst team in, in the Big 12. All right, well, Jackson, I appreciate you coming in, brother. Oh, thanks for having me on, Joey. All right. It was nice meeting you, man. And, Joey, it's always awesome seeing you, man. Nice seeing you, Jackson. We'll see you later, brother. See you later, man. All right. Well, Ryan, I'm going to go ahead and wrap the show up tonight. Let's see. uh, Get this back up here. So you can find Ryan Ryan McIntyre at Moneyline underscore Mac on Twitter and you can find their channel called the Ryan and Russ show right here on YouTube. Go over and sub it up watching videos. I'm telling you, you start watching your videos. You won't turn them off. You want to sit <laughs> and watch them. Um, but uh, anyway, Ryan, you have anything else you want to add before we close out? No, just, just uh, picking, picking off what we talked about already. Really excited about the future of the Ryan and Russ show. Over here on the Voice of College Football, really appreciative of you and Mark uh, giving us this opportunity, and we uh, look forward to bringing the necessary content, information, and news for our fan base. Uh, in my opinion, the best fan base in the country—that's Mountaineer Nation. So, love you guys, and look forward to a fun season. Absolutely. Well, thank everybody for in the chat for coming in with us. Uh, appreciate it. Um, be sure and come back here Wednesday night. Ryan and Russ show will be doing the show right here on this channel on Wednesday night. Do you have a time yet set for that? I think it's seven o'clock, but I, that's why I haven't said the time. I wanted to officially verify, and then obviously I'm sure we'll tweet it out. Correct. Okay, just keep an eye yep. on the community. We'll post yep. it in the community chat um, to let you know what time the show will be Wednesday night. And don't forget Wolfman's call every Monday through Thursday, four o'clock. Everyone have a great night. Let's go Mountaineers. We'll see you guys later. Go Mountaineers.